What's that? It's my troop transporter. It makes five more sounds, too. Welcome to the new Retro Blasting HQ. We are really excited to be in this new space. It's going to give us more elbow room and leg room to make great videos. And we're going to start off with a restoration that a lot of you have been asking about. It's the Imperial Troop Transporter from Kenner's Star Wars line in 1979. This is one coming from a very special friend of ours. Tom Burgess from IGrewUpStarWars.com lent us his Imperial Troop Transporter to try and solve the mystery of why the voice system doesn't work anymore. So let's get to it. The Imperial Troop Transporter was one of the first times Kenner forayed outside the lens of the Star Wars films. They decided to make a vehicle that was in the spirit of Star Wars, but not totally, you know, authentic to the movie's props and vehicles. But I think it works really well, and now I've heard that they've actually included this vehicle as canon, as they call it, in the new Star Wars Rebels television show. So, what was once not canon has now been retconned as canon. Uh, the Imperial Troop Transporter went through a few uh, interesting developments over the course of the Kenner line. The original, this is Tom's right here, this is the original uh, Imperial Troop Transporter. It had uh, voice activated features. When you would press these buttons, it would activate a record player, a primitive small plastic record player inside uh, the unit that would, you know, emit sounds from the films. It would be C3PO or, you know, R2D2, uh, and it sounded very scratchy. It sounded like Woody from Toy Story. Uh, they would later use this technology again on the Knight Rider 2000 kit car. When you pressed the back of the license plate, the record player would spin and you'd hear Kit say, you know, hello, Michael, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, back, to, back to Star Wars, though, the troop transporter was later repurposed by Sears as an exclusive as part of the Empire Strikes Back line, and it was re redubbed the Imperial Cruiser. The difference being, of course, you can see there's more sticker applications on this one and uh, different coloring, but also they took the sound system out of the toy. So this toy, which is from the Retro Blasting Archive, does not have the sound system in it. Now, that's disappointing uh, if you like having a complete Kenner run of, of uh, toys, but it also means you don't have the maintenance headache that you run into with this one. I don't know how many of you guys out there in the Star Wars Collectorverse know about Tom. Tom has been on, uh, he was featured in Plastic Galaxy. He is a hardcore vintage Star Wars collector to the point that he really only collects from the first 21 figures and some of the ancillary accessories. He started to foray into Empire Strikes Back, but not very much. But he only collects mint, 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 mint. And so we want to be very careful with this toy because I don't want it to go back to Tom uh, less than what it was before. So we're going to treat this toy with kid gloves. I'll take good care of her. She, she won't get a scratch. So let me get my Imperial Cruiser out of the way and we'll get started. Okay, so I've been running into a lot of difficulties with the Imperial Troop Transporter. It is a complex Star Wars vehicle and I don't want to get this wrong. I don't want to break anything because if I do, it's irreversible. I got your promise, <laughs> not a scratch. I also don't want to do any uh, uh, aesthetic damage to the toy. I don't want to put any stress marks on the plastic or anything like that because this is one of Tom's prized pieces. The first thing I attempted to do was remove all of the troop uh, figure modules from the side of the transport. This allows me to get to the access uh, to get access to the tabs that hold the bottom of the transport to the fuselage. Uh, the reason I have to do this is because the record player mechanism is mounted up underneath this piece and I can't get to it through the top. I have to get to it through the underside. But in doing this, I ran into a problem. This one doesn't want to come off. Um, so I thought, well, one out of you know six doesn't want to come off. That's fine. I'll just take the bottom of the uh, vehicle off. I should be good to go. So I removed three screws. One, two, three. There were three screws in the bottom. They're just standard Kenner screws that you've seen in many of our restorations. Uh, and then I attempted to uh, coax the fuselage from the toy. And I ran into another set of problems because if you look on this side, there are these dual holding tabs. They're little clips that are part of the underbody that hold it to the, the main 
uh, body of the vehicle, the chassis or fuselage, whatever you want to call it. And um, I can't seem to convince these to let go. Um, I've been trying very carefully with a variety of blunt uh, tools that won't mar the, the, the toy, um, but it just doesn't seem to want to come apart. So I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to turn the camera off so I can concentrate, and when I get this done, we'll be back. I was finally able to get the underbelly off of this Imperial Troop transporter uh, through a little bit of spirited... Uh, coaxing, but I managed to get it off of the vehicle without doing any aesthetic or structural damage to it, which was a real, you know, just nail-biting experience for me. That was too close. But now that we've done that, what you need to do is very carefully open up the back door, the back storage access door of this toy. And when you have one in mint condition like this, you need to be careful because this unfortunately was a plastic seam hinge. It was not uh, an actual hinge uh, with, you know, a pin through it. So if this moves too much, it can wear out and split. We don't want that to happen. So I just cracked this door open. And then what I need to do is rotate the underbody uh, so that these pins will turn and uh, you'll see in a second. It's like a keyed pin. So I'm going to turn this very carefully until it lines up with these holes and then I can remove uh, these pins from there we go that's if you can see it right here it's now lined up so I'm gonna remove that that's one okay and then that's two all right so that's a way there's our culprit right there. And I might do something about these stickers later on, Tom. I'm not really sure what you want me to do with them, or if anything, but I might gently stick them back down for you. Uh, anyway, this is the record player mechanism. And with Tom's example, I'm really hoping that the rubber band inside that spins the record against the motor is still intact. And this is just a motor that seized so that we can get it going again. If the rubber band inside has failed, then that means we have to source another one, which I've had a difficult time even researching ahead of this video. So let's see if the motor can be spun back to life as it is. All right, so the next step is going to be removing the sound module from the upper body of the transport. And to do that, first take note of the wires. You don't want to get these wires backwards when you put this back in. Blue on the, on the right, black on the left when it's facing you upside down like this. So we're going to carefully remove these clips. If they even want to come off. I don't like this at all. Tom, everything about your vehicle is difficult. Ah, there we go. There's one. There's two. Okay. Now that those are out of the way, flip this upside, or right side up, rather, and there's three screws on the top. We're going to very carefully remove these three screws. Be sure when you're doing this, if you're doing this on a mint example, to not hit other parts of the vehicle with the screwdriver. Just hit the screw. Alright, bring it back over.
Why do I feel like this isn't working? Ah, this is making sense now. Okay, there is a wall here. I've never worked on one of these before. There is this, this back wall for the, the, that has the switch and has the uh, sort of storage compartment. This wall comes up and out as well. So now that that's out, we have more wires. Uh, we have a red wire that goes into the unit that is connected uh, to the left-hand side of the battery compartment, and then we have the blue wire. We have the blue wire, which is uh, on the right. I don't... well, I guess we will have to remove the blue wire. So let's remove both of those. And now, this should come out. That's not the least bit intimidating, is it? Alright, what you're looking at here is you're looking at a simple uh, cog and gear system. When you turn this radar dish, it turns the laser cannon, the blasters, on the top. Fortunately, that's not what we need to be worried about, so we can now set this off to the side. Alright, here is our sound module. The motor is back here. Um, I don't want to take this apart any further than I have to because there is a rubber band that goes from the motor spindle around the, uh, around the record player. So when the motor spins, the record spins. And I don't want to get that messed up. So I have to figure out if it's just the motor seizing up or something worse, and I'm trying to determine how I'm going to do that. From what I can tell, there is a rubber band still around the mechanism, but I can't tell if it's dry rotted and broken. It doesn't look like, well, I take that back. It may actually be going all the way around. I'm hoping we get lucky because I don't want to have to break into this further. All right, so let's see if we can get this motor running. Not really sure how I'm going to accomplish that since I can't reach in to spin it. There's no easy way to get to the spindle on the motor in order to hand crank it like we've done with many of these other restorations to get it going again. So I'm going to have to go one level in to this uh, sound system to try and get access to the motor. And in doing so, I have to be careful not to upset the, the belt inside that operates this, assuming that it's intact, of course, because uh, if it's not, then we have a whole host of new problems. So I'm going to take this one screw off in the center Hold this upright so that I don't disturb the motor. Okay. I don't want to lose that screw. And there are two more screws that I'm seeing. I'm holding this together with my fingers because I can feel it wanting to kind of spring apart. Okay. We have the speaker cone. We have the motor. I think I can lift this off. And we have a number of little wires and switches that are supposed to 
make contact to make all this possible. As you can see, this is not your average set of Star Wars Kenner electronics. This is extremely complex, and now I've got to figure out why it's not working, how to test it, and how to get it all back together. Alright, we're going to shut the camera off so I can take another break. Thank you.